well uh, hello friends uh, in this video i will be discussing on uh, a new topic uh, called tensor networks so tensor networks uh, are uh, uh, diagrammatic representation of tensors and they are useful for various purpose like they help in better simulations and they reduces the time complexity <clears throat> as because we know that uh, for an hilbert space if you have a qubit space uh, for n particles you will have a space of 2 power n now if this n is an avogadro number then this is a very huge number so to deal with this situations in a better way uh, we can simulate such things in a better fashion using the tensor network well, further it provides a nice diag diagrammatic representations of various circuits and various uh, channels uh, similar to uh, the feynman diagrams of quantum field theory that helps in calculating the scattering cross sections the third point is that uh, the tensor networks in itself they uh, helps in storing and understanding the entanglement content and this entanglement content in uh, in case of uh, quantum gravities are related to the geometry and the curvature of the of the uh, space uh, space time that we are talking about and uh, hence it is important and for that there is one more usefulness is that the in general given a hamiltonian given an hamiltonian um, uh, present in nature uh, the realistic states the realistic states that are suited for the hamiltonian like if the hamiltonian has a strong coupling parameter or nearest neighbor coupling next nearest neighbor coupling in those cases um, there is some locality arguments that we can give to say that the uh, required state will actually belong to a very small subclass of that hilbert space and to understand this smaller subclass of a large hilbert space we can uh, track them using these tensor networks so but uh, how can we uh, uh, draw the tensor that is important so we start by understanding the fact that uh, tensors we have dealt with many times so they are linear maps that eats vectors and covectors uh, to give the underlying field element so this is the component of a tensor it has a valence of n and m so now let's uh, try to understand the drawing of the tensors so first the basic thing is the vector so a vector belongs to a particular hilbert space and then the vector can be decomposed in terms of these uh, components in a particular basis and these are the basis elements that we talk so these vi's are the basis elements uh, so this vi you can see the index is lower and hence this is a kind of a tensor it is a zero one tensor of valence zero one so the representation the entire information about this state is present in this vi's and in a fashion this is the representation of this state you can see it is like an umbrella <clears throat> now you see this can be transformed into a different diagram by which by rotating it clockwise so we can either re uh, read the diagrams read the tensor diagrams vertically or we can read them horizontally but horizontal to vertical conversion is brought about rotating by clockwise or anti clockwise direction and so uh, this is the case uh, so the vectors are represented in this fashion uh, suppose uh, you can again say that if if i had a uh, hilbert space product n then i would have represented it by n arrows so it would have been a valence zero and tensor similarly now we can uh, represent the dual vectors so the dual vectors are like the opposite of the umbrella so here you see the index below is related to a line coming out from bottom appropriately the diagram can be rotated again so an index above is a line coming out from the top and then we can again rotate it and we can see that the dual part so the description the uh, description in the computational basis of this uh, particular object is this thing and the description in the con uh, computational basis uh, for suppose this particular object uh, it is <clears throat> it is given by psi i i so you see whenever there is an arrow coming out from the bottom this arrow will go with a summation over this bra and an arrow from the top will go with a summation with a ket now let's uh, look at more complicated uh, things uh, that is the operators now operators uh, in case of operator in case of operators what we can see is that there is an arrow going inside and there is an arrow coming outside so the arrow coming outside will be associated with a uh, with a ket so the arrow coming outside uh, will be associated with a ket and the arrow going inside will be associated with a bra and then you can see that this is a mistake what this must be is that it will be a summation over ij aij i am keeping a gap whenever i am taking the index up and down now this up part is associated with a uh, uh, this up part is associated with a uh, bra uh, with a bra with a ket and the down part is associated with a bra so this is the representation of this particular uh, object this particular linear operator which is a bounded linear operator over the space of hilbert space uh, so that's all now let's look at a, a much more complicated tensor which looks like this fashion uh, 
so these all tensors can be brought into a horizontal form from the vertical form by the clockwise rotation and can be brought back by an anti clockwise rotation now you see how do we write this tensor so in the computational basis uh, there are two indices below and that will correspond to a uh, to a bra and one index above will be a ket and then there is a summation over all these so this this entire diagram that i have so this particular diagram this particular diagram encodes this much of information so now you can uh, perform more complicated uh, inform understanding of uh, circuits uh, these are kind of uh, circuits are also tensor networks quantum circuits so you see if i have this quantum circuit here now i can uh, convert it to a vertical diagram by rotating it anti clockwise to get this particular uh, thing here and now you see this entire thing this uh, this entire thing can be said to be as a tensor such that it is taking uh, inputs n and n and m and the output is i so given this thing it is actually phi i n m whenever the legs are going from the bottom this uh, comes in the below and the leg above comes in up part so this thing is actually a tensor prod uh, is it is a tensor multiplication so you can see that uh, here we have a j n b k m and t i j k so this is the entire product so this is a simple way of performing tensor uh, products so uh, what we can see is that suppose you have one box which has two outputs and it is connected to another box and suppose that also have two outputs then what we can write is we can write m n i can write it as i and i can write it as a k and l suppose this is t and this is a then this entire thing is equivalent to a big box phi and then you have m n k and l but what is phi phi m n l k actually uh, let me write phi in a different way you see phi l k m n is equal to a m n and this is i so i will put an i here and then there is a multiplication so t uh, which is the einstein summation that we will use so you see this thing is important like this tensor multiplication it will come uh, handy in various cases uh, so let's move on now once we have understood how these circuits play out uh, then what we can do is we can analyze some of the important properties so suppose one of the important property is this wire tensors so these are the wire tensors because they are just simply straight wires that will connect various components so you see this particular tensor is actually delta ij when i say delta ij it is actually delta i and the j is far so this notation will be we will see that this will be useful to uh, raise and lower the index uh, index of other tensors so this is delta ij and you can see that this wire is simply doing nothing because it is an identity map because the description the quantum computational description of this wire is simply uh, you have to uh, sum over the ij part and this is a uh, this is a uh, this is a ket and then you have a bra and then you can use the property of kronecker delta to get this particular thing now similarly you have a, a u shaped now you can see that this is this has uh, two output parts so there is a two index above and nothing is coming out from below so there is nothing here and this is of this form you see always you see uh, whenever you get a, a diagram whenever we will get a diagram suppose this then you can think of this as a box and then you can say that this thing is actually something of this form so it is like phi i j is equal to this thing but this thing is nothing but uh, delta i j and then you have to sum you have to sum over uh, this i and j but as they are both above we have to write like this we have to use the uh, we have to use the uh, ket version for both of them because they both are above so these uh, equ these equations are uh, similarly proven and now what we can see is that uh, if you uh, think about the bell basis or the bell states they can be represented in this fashion because this wire this wire is precisely a bell basis state of this form so uh, these are some sort of a notation i have also written here a uh, anti symmetric tensor notation but uh, for now it is not that useful but what is important is this tensor notations uh, i can we can further uh, try to understand a few more uh, points like uh, suppose i have something of this form now how we will uh, write the computational basis notion of this thing so for this thing you can see that there is a if i box this entire thing then we can see that there is something coming in and something going out so now what we can do is this entire thing you can put a k here because there is anyway nothing so this part here is a 
this part here can be written as delta i k. This part can be written as delta k j, and together they can be written as after the summation delta. So uh, this will this will be delta i j. So you see, this is like raising the k to the j. Uh, I hope this is clear. So this is equal to this. So in in a sense, this entire thing. So this entire thing is equivalent to this entire thing. I j i j. So uh, so the, this is a important property. Uh, further, uh, we will see uh, many of such properties. Uh, so that's all for this video. Uh, so that's all.